Hello, everybody. This is Barry Johns, and this is Studio Talk. Today's video uh, is really for all my guitar friends out there, uh, and really a discussion about my experience with both John Sir and Tom Anderson guitars, and we're going to talk about that today. So let's kind of set one of these off to the side for a second, and I'll talk. I'll start with Tom Anderson. Um, I'll start by saying this. Um, both of these guitars, although these particular gar guitars are quite different, um, uh, and what they're you know and the tones that they're designed to cover, um, but but both of these guitars manufacturers make some of the finest guitars that you can buy today. And when you play these particular guitars, that's when you notice the difference of what you're getting by spending more money on a more expensive guitar. It's all these little things that truly add up and make the playing experience so much better that you can't quite appreciate until you've owned one and you've played one for some time. And that's not just sitting down in a music store and cranking away through an amp playing uh, Freebird. <laughs> anyway, so today's not going to include any audio clips. I happened to uh, broke two fingers uh, a few months ago, and I'm still healing from that, so I can't quite can't quite play just yet. But regardless, I think when you see videos covering this particular subject, uh, it doesn't really matter because that's going to be explaining the tone of each guitar, which is radically different. So we're really not comparing the two to the other. This is not a one versus the other kind of thing. It's, it's some of the things that I've noticed that I appreciate more on one and, and then also more on one versus the other and more on the other versus the other one, if that even makes sense. I have no idea what I'm trying to... I know what I'm trying to communicate, but I don't know if you know it. Um, but anyway, this particular Tom Anderson, I happened to be on a trip with the family and was going through uh, Nashville, and it was on our way kind of taking a tour of the South, and... Um, uh, I walked into a guitar center and I saw this guitar and I couldn't stop looking at it. Uh, I, I just couldn't stop looking at it. I would look at it, walk away, look at it, walk away. It was just a thing of beauty. And what this guitar was when I bought it is one of their customers had special ordered a uh, Tom Anderson, had this built to their specs, uh, and then came back and said that, you know, he's some rich guy somewhere, you know, and came back and said, uh, well, I think I want a few things different. So, uh, I'm going to return this one and order another one. And basically, they gave him credit for this. I'm sure he lost a boatload of money, but rich guys usually don't care. Uh, and then so that's why this was on the particular um, rack that particular day. Now, the workmanship, I mean, the I don't even say workmanship, the craftsmanship that goes into these guitars is, fu is phenomenal. Um, but I will tell you that just like any guitar, no one size fits all. This is actually the second Tom Anderson that I've owned. The first one I bought was beautiful, gorgeous, played like butter, but I just didn't, for some reason, I didn't gel with that guitar. I think maybe I've got an old picture. I'll pull that up right now, but it was part of their Angel series. And, and then when you first see it and you say, well, Barry, yeah, maybe you just don't like Floyd Rose. That's, that's not the issue. Um, uh, but... But I just didn't gel with it. It didn't. I didn't vibe with it in a way that I did. And I don't think that's a reflection upon Tom Anderson in any way. I'm just saying, just like with any guitar, there is no one size fits all, and we all look for different things in a guitar. So I end up selling that guitar, and I bought that Sir over there. Uh, this actually, I bought this one here after the Sir. And so when you see this, you know, you see that neck back there. It's just absolutely stunning. Uh, it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous work of art. Um, you know, an absolute beautiful guitar. Uh, you know, and aesthetically, the details are kind of off the charts a little bit. Uh, well, not a little bit, a whole heck of a lot. Uh, I treat my guitars very well. They never leave the studio here, um, and except when I take them to get them set up. Uh, that's pretty much the only time they ever leave. So most, very few of my guitars have any any kind of ding, scratches, or anything like that. And if they do, it's out of my sheer stupidity. Uh, but but you, Tom Anderson makes absolutely phenomenal guitars, and I, I I strongly recommend you to consider this particular brand if you haven't. I mean, let's face it. There's a lot of great manufacturers out there. But with these guys, you can truly custom order, like this particular neck profile. It is, I guarantee you, you're not going to buy a Tom Anderson, a stock Tom Anderson with this particular neck profile. 
This was custom tailored for the guy who originally bought it. It's kind of hard. You can't tell on a video, of course, but this is a fat neck. Now, a lot of people don't like fat necks. I do. I, I like a combination of both. I, I don't settle on one particular neck profile, but for certain things, especially, uh, you know, this, uh, you know, a three single coil guitar, I really like a fat neck. Um, and I enjoy it, but not only is this one fat, it's, it's a little wider than normal. So the curvature, the radius, uh, I don't know what the official radius is, but I, but it, but it's, it's much different than any other guitar I've ever played. Uh, and once you get used to it, it's absolutely phenomenal. Now, again, this was custom ordered by, by the guy who originally placed this order. Whereas the angel that I bought was a stock, a stock Tom Anderson. But, um, again, you can see with this particular guitar, Let's see if I can get that in focus. Okay, I'm trying, guys. I'm trying. Uh, here we go. Getting a little bit better there, I guess. And so, you know, it's just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful guitar. And, and you know, you notice something different. I think Tom Anderson's the only one I know, right, at least of this caliber, that does two, only does two uh, screws to hold the neck on. Uh, but the stability, the, uh, I, I, can, I can, this guitar basically never goes out of tune, which is kind of surprising because it's got a tremolo on it, and so you'd think it would occasionally. And of course, it gives you the typical switching options that you can do various things. Now, um, so Tom Anderson is absolutely, absolutely phenomenal, and I cannot recommend this particular uh, guitar or brand. This guitar I can recommend, I cannot recommend enough, uh, but Tom Anderson guitars are absolutely phenomenal. But just like with any guitar, you've got to match, you know, you've got to be able to match um, uh, that guitar's got to match your playing style and what you prefer. Now, here is a Sir that I got, and there's a great story behind this particular one. Uh, this is actually a special run guitar, um, and it it is the um, Mahogany Deluxe series. So it has a full-on mahogany back and neck, as you would expect from the Mahogany Deluxe, and uh, there were only, I believe, 50 of these made worldwide, um, and I had no idea when I bought it. Um, this is actually the prototype that inspired it all. You know, when I first got it, I kept saying, man, that looks a lot like the Mahogany Deluxe series, but I didn't see any documentation in the, uh, in the paperwork for this. And so I contacted Sir, first of all, both John Sir and Tom Anderson do a phenomenal job of customer service. Off the charts, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be told by this, but they both do an outstanding. And with this particular one, John Sir himself got involved. And, and so when I, when I kind of contacted him and I said, hey, you know, what, what's the makeup? I kind of wanted to get the specs just so I know because this is out of without a doubt the most favorite guitar I've ever played in my life. Uh, this is my number one go-to, uh, especially obviously for humbuckers, but, it, but I absolutely love it. And I've got quite a few guitars hanging out here. Uh, so um, I, it's absolutely phenomenal. So I contacted them and said, hey, what's the specs? I give them the serial number and all of that. And then all of a sudden they contact me back and says, well, Barry, you've kind of got a pretty special guitar there. Um, and, and then I come to find out that this was actually the prototype for the series, um, the one that inspired it all. And so this is technically zero, 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 and that's their words, not mine. And they actually sent me, when you buy the Mahogany Deluxe, gosh, I don't know where, it's, it's in here somewhere. I should have got that up before I did this video. But anyway, um, I'll take a picture of it and kind of put it over this so you see it. Uh, but uh, when you bought the Mahogany Deluxe series, again, a, a run of only 50 worldwide, you know, all the specs and everything on it were on a piece of, of, of flame maple, uh, you know, and then, you know, CNC are engraved in there with the specs and everything, along with a certificate of authentic authenticity and everything like that. Well, John had them fill, make that particular plate for me, that, that, that uh, you know, the, the specs on the flame maple, as well as a, as a, a certificate of authenticity indicating that it was the prototype, the inspiration behind all of it, and they did that for free. I didn't ask for that. I wasn't call. I was just calling to get the full specs on it. That's all I was trying to do. That was it. Um, and then all of a sudden, bam, it shows up in the mail one day, and I couldn't believe it. I mean, who does that? Who does that? I mean, it was absolutely phenomenal. Um, and, and so I, I cannot be happier. But, 
Just like with the Tom Anderson, again, I'll kind of show this again real quick. You can go through that and see that guitar. It's a beautiful guitar. It needs to be cleaned up, so I apologize for that. Got some fingerprints and stuff like that on it. But an absolute, absolute phenomenal guitar. And the tone of this thing is an absolute beast. Um, but just like with the Tom Anderson, this was not my first Sir. I bought my first Sir and I returned it and bought that Tom Anderson Angel. So my very first Sir, which is a Sir, um, uh, I think modern, uh, that was, yeah, a modern. And, um, uh, and, and I returned that guitar. I, I didn't gel with it at all. And I thought, man, this is not for me. This is not, you know, I, I was, it was kind of a letdown for me. Um, and so then I returned it and I bought, I used the money that I returned that with and bought that Tom Anderson Angel that I ended up selling. So ironically, my first two bouts with them were not good. Now, keep in mind, there was nothing wrong with either of these guitars. They were, both of them were absolutely phenomenal guitars. Just didn't vibe with me for some reason. Now, maybe I'm particularly picky. Maybe I have unrealistic expectations, uh, that kind of thing. That could be. That very well could be. Uh, but but I can tell you that my first one, and it wasn't bad. It just didn't blow me away. And for that kind of money, I wanted to be blown away. Um, but but I, it blows away everybody else all the time. So keep that in mind. Both uh, Just phenomenal guitars. And this particular guitar, um, I, I you know, it has a real special meaning to me. I don't I don't particularly name my guitars. I've never done that before. But this is the only one. Uh, actually, I've got two. I've got a, an acoustic guitar that I bought with money after my mother passed. We grew up with basically no money when I was growing up, and so she wasn't able to leave me very much, uh, other than a lifelong, uh, you know. Um, experience of total love. I've never met anybody with the capacity to love more than my mother and a kind heart. And uh, everything I am, I owe to her, not to get too distracted. But uh, I used that money and I bought that that really nice acoustic guitar. And then the second one, a very, very dear friend of mine had passed away. Um, we had known each other for so long and, and, I, and I loved him. He was a brother to me. I mean, we actually called each other brothers. His kids to this day call me Uncle Barry. Um, and this is called the Avery guitar. And, and, and it's named after a lifelong friend, uh, Avery Ferris, who retired uh, and then moved back up to Atlanta. And not that long after, you know, unfortunately passed away and left us. So when I went up to go to that funeral, um, you know, I, 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 you know, it was down and out and the family was there and, and we were about ready to leave that afternoon uh, and I needed some time to kill. So I grabbed my other son, my, one of my sons, Joshua, who also plays guitar. And I said, let's go over to this high-end guitar store that's over here. It's only about a mile from the hotel. And so I kind of wanted to take my mind off things. And I walked in that guitar store and I saw this guitar and it was much, this was actually before the Tom Anderson and just much like the uh, the Tom, Tom Anderson, when I walked in, I just could not stop thinking about it. I played it. I was blown away when I played it. You know, I thought, you know, let me give it some time. I'll actually go back because I live in Florida. Um, I'll go back to Orlando and then I'll call and make an offer for it. Uh, and that way I don't have to pay tax. At the time, you didn't have to pay internet tax. So it was going to save me quite a bit of money. And um, they, they, they wouldn't budge on the price. And at first I said, I'll nudge them down. They're just playing strong. strong. And this was Righteous Guitars uh, out, of, out of Atlanta. And they wouldn't budge on the price. And I wasn't used to that. I don't think I've ever experienced that by any dealer ever for any guitar. And they simply would not budge on the guitar. And it had actually been hanging on their shelves for um, some, I mean, maybe about six months or so. Um, and so high-end guitars don't sell as frequently as, as lesser expensive guitars just because of the price, prices a lot of people out of it. And, and, I, and I kept making a series of offers, and no matter what I did, they just would not take it. They would not take it. And, and this is the only guitar in my life, only one, only one ever, 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 I paid exactly what they were asking. And I said I had to have it. And this went on for several months, but I couldn't let it go. And I'm so glad that I did. I'm so very, very glad that I did. And so, you know, when looking at these guitars, obviously they're beautiful, beautiful instruments. Obviously, uh, they're absolutely gorgeous guitars. And, and I would not ever part with either one of these. There are other guitars that would leave here. Uh, I cannot see me ever selling these guitars. 
uh, either one of them. I'm that in love with both of them. So if you're considering a John Sir guitar or you're considering a Tom Anderson guitar, I'm here to tell you, you cannot go wrong. And they are worth every penny if you can afford it, right? Uh, that's the key. Not everybody can afford uh, to be able to purchase guitars like this. And I'm and I'm blessed at this stage of my life where, where I've been able to. Um, and and so I, I, I'm so thankful that I found both of these guitars. So you really cannot go wrong with either one of these guitar builders, whether it be Tom Anderson or John Sir. They both make phenomenal guitars. And the playability and the craftsmanship, the workmanship, is absolutely phenomenal by both builders, which was the case on the first two of each one of these that I bought absolutely amazing uh, and I cannot recommend them enough it, you know like I said if you can if you if your budget can afford you know guitars in this particular price range if you can't nothing wrong with with lower price guitars nothing wrong played them for majority of my life I haven't always been able to afford some nice things like this um, so anyway this you know like I said if you're a guitar player and maybe you're not used to watching maybe you're used to watching guitar only videos if you happen to do recording at home check out my other videos that's what this particular channel is really about um, but I appreciate everybody for staying tuned and watching this and hopefully you found this somewhat interesting at the very least if not informative um, and so do me a favor hit that like that subscribe and that notification bell help me grow this channel I really appreciate it I work hard for all of you folks and uh, we appreciate you doing that for me if you feel uh, that it's worth it, okay? If you don't, well, I guess move on. That's okay. Yeah, not everybody has to like me. Uh, but until next time, I hope every one of you have a fantastic guitar playing day. Until next time, have a great day. Bye-bye.